Welcome to this quick start video on the Honeywell XNX transmitter. These videos are intended to give you a quick step-by-step -step process for utilizing the many capabilities of this instrument. As always, refer to the manual for details and follow all safety recommendations. In this segment, we'll focus on 4 to 20 loop verification, trimming of the 4 to 20 loop if necessary, and testing alarm functions. All these capabilities can be executed on the XNX transmitter without the need for any calibration or test gases. Again, to enter the password, I'm going to use my magnet and trip over the uh, check mark. That gets me to my passcode level. Default is 0000. To index to the next variable, you simply wave across the check mark. If you had changed your password, you'd use the left or right arrows to index the number up or down. In this case, again, we left it at a default 0000. At the final entry, you get to the main menu. The main menu has an information option. It has a test function, which is where we're going to drill down. Uh, the next menu is calibration, and the fourth is actually your configuration area. Again, for this function, for 4 to 20 loop verification, we're going to enter this test function. So when test is highlighted, I wave over the, uh, the check mark again in order to go to that submenu. In the test functions, the options that are available are setting the inhibit levels. Inhibit level would be uh, when you're doing test functions, what milliamp cons uh, value do you want the system to drive to uh, to isolate alarms, etc. Uh, next over is where we'll have the ability to force a milliamp output. Uh, the next choice over is actually simulating alarm functions. It's going to allow us to drive our alarm variables. First thing we're going to do is a 4 to 20 output. So. I have the menu highlighted for forcing a 4 to 20 output. I enter that submenu. The current output is displayed, and right now we're driving 4 milliamps. It's highlighted. I'm going to enter that menu. I now have our scroll function. So I want to do a mid-range check. I've got a particular checklist that says I need to check, th uh, check my loop in my systems for uh, three different points. I pick whatever that concentration is, and if I want to go to 14 milliamps, I scroll over, enter those variables, move across, and then you'll see that we get back to this menu where it gives me this output. I have to arrow over until the check mark, which is accept the settings, that now allows me to drive that output. Over here you can see that right now we're pushing out 14 milliamps. This would be the time that I would be testing, uh, communicating with my control system, confirming that my 14 and their 14 are, are reading correctly. Once completed, we can simply exit out of this function uh, and eliminate the go back to a standard 4 to 20 reading. Next step, after we've performed our loop verification for however many points we need to, now we've got an option to do an alarm test. So perhaps we've got uh, digital uh, communication, we have an internal relays and we're taking uh, contacts back to a PLC or we're driving lights or horns. We can actually test those functions as, uh, as well and again all from the transmitter we don't need gases in order to force the sensor into, into uh, alarm settings. So in this circumstance I'm going to arrow over to my alarm and fault simulation. So I want to test my alarm system, my alarm loops, I enter that function. I now have an option of simulating an alarm 1. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I simulate an alarm level 1. What happens in the system when I accept this is that if I have an internal relay uh, in the unit it will trigger. Not only that, if I've set my alarm levels, uh, the 4 to 20 will drive to whatever that corresponding signal is. So if I've got an alarm function at a control system or PLC, and I've got relays that are wired to a local light, I can enable this and gauge it and drive both of those functions. Uh, my option now, you can see here that the system says it's an alarm. If there are relays engaged, those relays would be uh, in their alternate state. I'd be testing my lights and my 4 to 20 driving back to my control system would be giving me whatever I programmed in as my first level alarm. The same thing holds true. Uh, I can turn that function off by ending it. I can arrow across uh, and go to my alarm 2. I can do a warning simulation uh, or a fault simulation. So if I've got a fault relay that's uh, wired into a safety loop, I can actually test that function by engaging that, accepting that, and now I have a fault function. So if I've designed a control system where I'm picking up an input as a fault relay uh, or I've got a fault light or some other strategy, I've now tested that whole loop uh, and confirmed that it, it's uh, operational. 
Uh, we can exit out of this thing simply by Xing out, uh, leaving the test function, uh, and then going back into a normal reading state. In this case, if you're uh, from a previous function, we had actually established a latching function. Uh, we had latched our alarm one. So in this circumstance, it shows me that I've had a, a latched alarm function. Uh, in order to reset that function, I simply wave across this. I enter the reset, uh, reset alarm function and use the check mark to accept. Uh, that releases that latched alarm relay. I go back into my normal operating state uh, with my LCD check mark telling me that the system is functioning. Final step we may have to look at uh, when we're going through a 4 to 20 loop verification is the chance that there needs to be some trimming to take place. In some cases, long line runs, uh, whatever other uh, noise conditions exist. My 4 to 20 uh, and the control system's 4 to 20 don't match up exactly. Uh, we give you the ability to trim that function out, and that shows up in our calibrate uh, submenu. So uh, we were in test menu when we did our loop. We're going to operate on the assumption that we were off by a tenth or some, ver uh, some amount that we need to trim out. So I'm going to engage the calibrate menu, arrow over to calibrate, accept it. And then here, and uh, we'll do this in another video, is where we do our gas calibrations, our bump tests, or in this case, we're going to calibrate the 4 to 20. I'm in my calibrate milliamp output menu, I accept, and now I am going to be driving my 4 to 20, uh, excuse me, at this point, a 4 milliamp output. So there goes 4 milliamps. Uh, if I was left and right, I'd be trimming that up or down. Now I'm on my 20 milliamps, I can arrow this over, uh, arrow it back and forth until the person on the other end of the control loop uh, agrees that we've got uh, the right variables. Once it's dialed in or trimmed in the correct location, again, you accept it. Uh, we've now just done a trim function on our 4 to 20 milliamp signal, and we can exit back out. And effectively, we've done uh, a complete pre-commissioning and confirmation of alarm uh, and analog loop information. Thank you for watching these Honeywell XNX Quick Start videos. The Honeywell XNX Universal Transmitter is an extremely powerful and capable industrial gas detection platform but it's very easy to configure and very simple to use. Remember, these videos do not replace uh, the manuals, and uh, you need to understand what's in, contained in those manuals and the safety warnings as well. Please let us know if these videos have been helpful, and if you've got ideas for other videos, please let us know that as well. Uh, we'd like to find out ways to help. Additional information on this product can be found at www.raco.com or at the Honeywell Analytics website. Thanks again.